Hello there, DC Gamer. So it is another month and a new heroic race has come once again, this time for the brand new Cinco Dragon. So Cinco is actually not too bad for a pick of a team member because primary element happy isn't the worst element ever. It's actually quite decent, but having beauty in there as well, along with ice and wall, which are just general elements, I think is quite a nice little selection of elements on this dragon. Um, even if you don't want to use it in your team, it's at least good to pick up these dragons from these events in case you ever want to trade orbs for them, or in case you want to add them to your team later on and use them in arenas. But anyway, this is that new heroic that is in this newest heroic race event. And so we will be going through how you can do every single quest in heroic races, like I do every single month that we get these races. But there are a few things to be mindful of. And I will say that before you even get into this event, do be mindful if that if you want to take part in the heroic combat quests at the end of this heroic race, so the ones where you can get bonus orbs, do be aware that you will need all of the dragons from this event, 28 million food, 93 gems, and then you'll have to log in. So realistically, if you want to take part in the heroic combat quests after this her heroic race is over so that you can get more orbs for this dragon, you will need to make sure you've got just under 100 gems spare. So anyway, moving on to this actual race itself. If you've never seen a heroic race before, maybe it's a little bit confusing to you, but essentially to get your hands on this heroic race dragon, either you need to come first in your bracket of players, or the way to guarantee this heroic dragon is actually to get to lap 15. You don't have to finish lap 15, you just have to get to lap 15. And so you'll see her there. And if you get to lap 15 and you also come first, you do not get two copies of this dragon. You will just get one copy. It's just by getting to lap 15, it guarantees the dragon. The other thing to be mindful of is that to be able to get the heroic dragon, and if you don't get to lap 15, you at least have to make your way to lap five. If you don't at least get to lap five, you will not get the high Synco dragon at the end of the event. So those are some really basic things about this event. The other thing is that we've got tons of really, really cool rewards in this event. So we've got things like birthday gifts for the collection. We've got redemption insignias, legendary egg chests, a banquet box. These are really good. And, you know, there's some really, really solid rewards outside of the heroic itself. So, you know, we've got orbs of these dragons. You can get some Synco orbs in that as well. We've got Mythical Egg Chest, which has a lot of cool dragons in it. And I think a lot of people this time are looking to get to at least lap 20, if possible, to get the Birthday Hamper, if not at least the Titan Egg Chest. So there's tons of good stuff that you can get. But to do that, you have to get to specific laps. So how do you actually get to those laps? Well, you have to do these quests on the right hand side. And so if you want to have a guide that lists these out for every single lap and every single node, as always, I have posted this in my Discord server and the DC Event Guides channel, but we are going to be using either DeepList or DitLep to help us out in this heroic race because out of these two links here, we'll open these up. And every single time we have a heroic race, I'll say open up DitLep, and then we can scroll down, pick a specific lap that we're on, and then we can see what the quests are, what the cooldowns are, what the pool is, everything that you'll need to know about the specific nodes in this event. So we're gonna be using this in a second because we're about to enter lap six. But you'll notice that right now I'm on lap five, node five. And lap five, node five, we have this quest here, which is get item from battles. Now, this is really, really, really important if you want to play this event optimally. But if you are ever going to gem in the heroic race, the best time to gem would be in a situation like this. You can see that we've got a fight that we can skip for 12 gems because, you know, it's got like a three hour cooldown or if we go onto this main page panel, you see that we can actually skip this for three gems, which is really cheap. And you're not really ever going to get a better value for this. You can skip tons of time later on by doing this, but only skip the final fight, because if you try and skip the other fights as well, it ends up being quite expensive. If you're ever going to skip anything in this heroic race, 
try and make it these final battles. And on top of that, we are going to have League Battles as well. If you can't do League Battles because you don't have Dragons that are a high enough level, there are another time where you might have to use Gems, but I can do all my League Battles. The only thing that I really ever am willing to Gem on in these events are these Final Battles because it's super duper worth it. So we're going to spend three Gems and then we can get onto this next level immediately. And so there's our birthday gift. And now we're on lap six node one and lap six node one our quests are going to be get items by feeding and getting items by collecting gold this is a super super easy node because you'll notice that the first two to three nodes of each lap they have no cooldown you can just collect all of the items and then immediately you can finish off that node without having to wait that's not going to be the case on every single node and with every single mission but generally on node one to three, that is the case. So in this case, we can double check by checking the websites, but you'll see that there is no minimum wait time and you can finish this off instantly as long as you have enough habitats to collect from and as long as you feed up a dragon enough time. So we're gonna go and do that right now. For the collecting gold mission, You'll see that for me, this is going to be incredibly easy because I've got like a bajillion habitats. So any of you longer term players that have lots of habitats or say you're a returning player, you'll see that we're not getting any more gold collects. That's because we finished off that quest now. However, if you're a new player and you are really struggling with how to do this, the best way to get this quest done is actually by popping down tons of level one Terra habitats. You'll see that all of my Terra habitats are upgraded, but that's because they're full of dragons. If you're a brand new player that barely has any dragons, best thing that you can do for gold collect, like here you'll see a Terra level one habitat. Just go into your shop, get a Terra habitat, place it down, wait for it to build it takes 10 seconds it'll finish building so let's give it a few more seconds do, 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 do. there you go it's finished off now so then we click and then immediately you can start putting level one terra dragons into this habitat and level one terra dragons are your friend you can buy these from the shop for like no money and you can then feed them up a little bit like if you need to you can feed up your boy sanderson here to level 10 so then you're at least generating a little bit more gold in the habitat but there you go you can level them up and now you've got a terror dragon sitting in there in the habitat and then once you see the gold symbol over the top of the habitat that's when you should click because just so that you know, if you are collecting from a habitat when it's not full and when that gold symbol's not there, you are not guaranteed an item. So, I suggest put, popping down all of these level 1 terror habitats, filling them up with terror dragons that are a little bit fed, and then you will have a really, really easy time with that gold collecting quest. The other quest that we've got here, you'll see that I actually did a little bit of that just then with the terror dragon, is actually feeding, and it is just that simple again so you'd go over here you would get a with gold go and buy a terra dragon for 100 gold you'd place it into a habitat and then you feed up that level one terra dragon you're not going to get a, an item for doing this every single time you feed but that's why you feed them a few times you'll see the beetles come up and then eventually they'll start coming up because we've collected all the items and there we go we're on node two so some of these nodes really are that simple and that easy and I think it's really important to know when you should be taking breaks in this event and when you can immediately just, you know, continue on with your normal grinding per se. This one right here, lap six, node two, you'll see that we've got get items by collecting food. As this is a node two mission, this is another one that's not going to have any wait timer. However, this one is going to work slightly differently to the previous one that we just did. Because if we scroll down on Ditlet, for example, you'll see that it says the same thing. Collect food. There is wait time. There's none because it's instant and there is no minimum amount of time. So in theory, you could finish off this quest immediately. However, you'll also notice that it says 10%. And what this 10% chance means is that when you go to collect a food item, there's only going to be a 10% chance of you actually getting an item. And unfortunately, earlier when I swapped from PC to mobile, I accidentally uh, you, I put in some longer time of food in more farms than I expected, which can happen when you swap platforms. So now we are only working with five of our farms, which kind of sucks. 
but you'll see I've just collected food from all of those farms and we didn't get an item. And that is because there is only a 10% chance, roughly speaking, something like that, of collecting each time you click on a farm. This means that in theory, you could collect from all of your farms five times and you might not get a single item. It is purely RNG as to how often you're gonna be getting items for your collections. So yeah, good luck with that aspect of it. And especially if you're working with a reduced set of farms, like in my case here, because I accidentally popped in the longer timers when I swapped platforms, you're gonna have to be sitting here and just grinding and grinding on clicking these farms. So while this Node 2 mission is in theory an instantaneous mission, it doesn't really work like that in reality. So, you know, especially if we've got to collect the, the items 29 times from this, I would say give this at least half an hour. And that's being quite nice. Normally I'd say half an hour if you had all of your farms available, uh, but with only five farms, it might even take longer. So highly recommend like in my case, I've got dual monitors. If you've got your game on mobile, just open your game on mobile while you're doing something else because, you know, it's really brainless. You just have to click them. And inside these farms, you should be popping in the shortest food timer here in all of them, which is Bluebell Bouquets. Uh, except if you're going to go to sleep, you can put in, say, the 12 hour food timer so that then when you wake up, you can instantly collect an item from them. But otherwise, the safe way of dealing with these is by popping in Bluebell Bouquets into all of your farms. Um, if you don't have the Alliance version, that is fine because you know in the farms there's two options bluebell flowers or bluebell bouquets if you don't have bluebell bouquets just use bluebell flowers if you're not actually in an alliance and maybe you're not high enough level yet or maybe you just aren't in one because you haven't been accepted that's fine you can still do it with the other version but even though we've been collecting from this you'll see we're still at zero items so yeah we're going to be in for a long evening i i fear um, on top of this, you may also have your tower. So Ramsey, for instance, we're going to have him in 13 hours time. It's a shame we don't have him immediately because he would be very, very useful just about now. Um, although I think most of our timers are like quite a bit longer than that. Oh God, this is what happens when you swap between devices. So yeah, this is an example of how annoying some of these quests can be sometimes. Even with an easy quest like this in theory, this is one of the most, I'd say, obnoxious quests in the game. But this is lap six, node two. So I'll get to finishing this off sometime tonight anyway. Now, the next quest that we would come across in lap six, again, once we finish this food collecting, would be hatching eggs and another set of feeding. So we don't need to go through feeding again, but hatching eggs is another tedious quest. Much like how this food collecting is unsuccessfully happening, we have hatching quests. And so it's quite easy in how you do it. You'd go in with gold by a Terra Dragon Egg. I love these little Terras, they're useful. And then you go ahead, you place it, and then you have to physically click it into the habitat. And then as it gets clicked into the habitat, that's when it will decide whether you get a, a point towards the hatching quest or not. But just like the farms, 10% or somewhat around that. So that means that you may have to hatch eggs 30 times before you get a single item. Maybe you'll get two in a row if you're lucky. Sometimes it does work like that. Like you'll go ahead, you'll just hatch this egg, place it. You'll pop it down, you'll get an item, and then you'll go and pop another one into your hatchery, and then you'll hatch it, and then you'll get another one straight away. Other times it might make it may take you 60 attempts. Like these farms have been pretty bad. There you go, our first item. Woohoo! One item every like three minutes. Oh dear. Anyway, but yeah, the hatching works very, very similarly to the farms. So, you know, if you're thinking, oh, is my game bugged? Is something wrong? No, you just need to do it more unfortunately. So a lot of times people think that they're like screwing up somewhere genuinely when it comes to these hatching quests. It is just the fact that it's a low 10% chance to collect. So please keep that in mind. Now, after we get the feeding and hatching done on node three, we would move on to this section, which is league battles and battle dragons. And now the league battles don't actually have a cooldown. The reason for that being that, you know, if you go into your league battles, they naturally have a cooldown anyway. And since there's only three required on this lap six node, 
you should be fine as long as you are on your next league battles reset period if not you can refill with gems that you know that's more gemming so if you don't want a gem you'll just have to wait like six hours or a few hours until your resets come back for your league battles but of course with league battles the thing to keep in mind is that not everyone can do them straight away because if you power leveled your player level unfortunately you're going to be in a much worse position than someone that hasn't and if you don't at least have like level 45 plus dragons to deal with league battles you're probably going to be a little bit screwed in this event to be honest so you'll have to exclusively use your gems on league battles which is not ideal at all in my case i can do all of my league battles pretty much without even thinking so you know they're free low quests for me no cooldown on this on these ones and we can just do them whenever we want to so i actually really really love the league's quests now but i understand that if you're not at my stage in the game maybe you hate them but we've also got black battle dragons on this node as well and this is going to be the same case as before for the first five battles out of this pool of six you would log in every 15 minutes or every 30 minutes however long the timer is and then for the final battle that might be one that you want to skip with gems for like three gems cost or whatever it is it just saves you tons of time but if you're going to be waiting anyway because you're like going to go to bed or you're going to go to work then obviously there's no point in gemming that final fight in that case but after that we would come across this node which i know a lot of people hate nodes like this it's hatching eggs and breeding dragons and this is like a very annoying node because hatching eggs we just went through is annoying breeding dragons is pretty much the same thing and um, instead of you being able to go into your hatchery get an egg and then buy it with gold you can't do that for breeding because what you have to do is you're going to have to actually have a breeding den open you're going to have to click to breed two non-empowered terror dragons make sure they're not empowered otherwise you will hate yourself and accidentally breed something with a really long breeding time and you will ruin your event progress so don't do that but you're going to need to pop together two terror dragons into a, a breeding den click breed and then you're going to have to wait and then the moment that it will decide whether you get an item or not is the moment that you click your breeding den so in this case you can see the heart is up as soon as i click that that's when we would either be given an item or not but as i'm sure you can predict i'm about to say it is not guaranteed so just like with the hatching and just like with the farming in our farms here with the food there is only a small percent chance that you're going to get it each time so even though in this case there is a pool of three it might take you 20 minutes to get these three items and then because there is a pool of three but there are total items that you need of four this means that you can collect three of the item collects but then you're going to have to wait two hours before you can log in to get the fourth and then you're going to have to do that breeding bit again so it could be very very annoying at times i get it it happens we've all had our many rants about it before anyone that's played these events it is just one of those things where if you don't have permanent speed up happy hour so you can't put in combinations like secret fire or war dragon eggs for example and skip those you are left with terror x terror they are going to be your boys for this event so good luck with this node you're going to need it with the collects and in terms of the actual pools and the wait timers it is really important that you understand what these mean because if you've ever sat there say feeding dragons on node 3 and say you get 16 items and then you're wondering like why aren't i getting more items i'm feeding my dragons and i'm not getting more items like what's going on is my game bugged like what's happening like you'll sit there you'll get one of your dragons you'll feed and you'll just be like look there's no beetles there's no beetles what's happening and this is pretty simple and a really important thing to understand about this event when it says there is a pool of 16 imagine someone physically filling a swimming pool with 16 items and you can collect those 16 items by jumping in and picking them out of the pool i'm talking about a physical pool in real life a water one and they throw some tennis balls in there so you jump in the swimming pool and you collect all 16 of them but then you're going to have to wait until random man 69 comes across and then puts another 
tennis ball in the pool for you to then dive in and collect it again. That's what it means. It's like, um, again, it's basically just like someone is just filling up a ditch or something with more of the items that you need, but you have to go in there and scrounge for them. And so then when you've collected all of them, you need to wait for Larry to come back with another item. And that's what these things mean. So you'll collect all 16 of your feeding dragon items, but then Mr. Larry, Mr. Gamer69 comes in and he'll fill it up with five more items, but he'll fill them up with one item every 12 minutes. So every 12 minutes you could log in to collect one more item, or you could wait as long as the remaining five items. So, you know, in this case, it says minimum time, one hour. And now the numbers from these websites can be very slightly wrong at times, but generally speaking, they're pretty accurate. They might just be off by a few minutes, for instance, but they're pretty good and pretty reliable for the most part. And they're more or less the same every single heroic race. So whatever the case was on lap eight of the previous heroic race, it will be the same this time around, usually. So those are all of the various quests that you'll have to do. Again, I think the most annoying quests by far are going to be the farming quests, because these come up really early and you'll see there are tons that you have to collect and it can take blooming forever if you don't have all of your farms available. And then the hatching and breeding quests, if you don't have permanent speed up happy hour, they are going to be your nemesis. So ideally, I would say at minimum, have two hatchery slots open at all times for this event. I'd also say try and pop your breeding dens next to your hatchery and try and make them also be free if you can at least two of them. Having two of these dens free and having two slots free will be, it will be so much better than only having one. Having more will make it even easier. But again, if you want to get on with regular, say, dragon hatching and breeding and other things while you're doing the heroic race, and I mean, we are going to have events on at the same time as this race. So if you want to do that, you can do it, but at least try and leave one of your dens free. Like my breeding sanctuary is full at the moment. So, you know, we can still do some breeding, but these are free at all times. And you'll see that I pop most of the terror habitats nearby as well. Reason for that being so that I can hatch a dragon, place it in here without having to move and without having to think. That's why all of these things are around here. I do also see that quite a few people instead move their hatchery, breeding dens and terror habitats over here. Reason being so that then they can have all three breeding dens in the same place. But, you know, depends on what you want to do. I just fill my island over here with sea habitats and I cannot be bothered to move them now. So that's why everything remained over here. There is no other reason. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have all of my breeding dens in the same area. But I would say that those are the basics of how you can do well in this heroic race. Again, if you're getting frustrated with the quest, it's quite normal. So, you know, it may take you 20, 30 minutes just for one of these collecting quests. The other thing I guess I should mention is this skip, booster skip. Now, this thing can be a godsend but usually it's not actually very helpful. The main use for booster skip would be for the same as I would say your usage of gems. I would say the best use of booster skip would be if you have battles quests. Now you can either use it on the final battles quest or you can use it when you have a few of the battles quests to do. And then what can happen is you can say get plus five items, plus two items, plus one item, or you can actually skip entire missions. And just imagine how good that would be, being able to skip an entire collecting food mission. I say that, but don't ever use your skips on nodes that can be instantly completed unless you are just like stuck, completely stuck on that one for whatever reason. Like if you had this food quest, for instance, and you weren't, you've accidentally put in one day food into the farms, maybe then I can see you using it, but you've just kind of screwed up big time anyway then. The best use is going to be for the winning battles quests or the league battles quests if you can't do those. So try to be very mindful of when you use this. Another time that you can use this, I would say would be on like, like node four to five, because node four and five typically have the longest minimum times due to the 
uh, the pools being different to the total amount of items. So like this breeding dragon section here, you'll see there's a pool of three, but there are five items and the minimum time that you'd have to wait would be two hours and nine minutes before you can come back and then complete the final two. I can see people potentially using the skip on this as well. One, if they don't have any slots available and two, if they just cannot be bothered with the quest. It can be very useful in those cases. So I would say those are the best uses of the skip if you've just used them on a random quest for no reason, well, it is a big waste and you could potentially end up wasting hours and hours of time skip. So be very mindful of when you use booster spin. If you have to wait a few hours before you actually use it, that's fine because you may not understand early on why this can be so game changing. But if we go to say lap 13, let's look at the cooldowns on lap 13. First one, hatch eggs you'll need to hatch 10 of them there is no minimum timer that's great lap 13 node 2 there are no minimum wait timers that's great lap 13 node 3 2 hours and 30 minute wait timer is getting longer lap 13 node 4 we have 3 hours 20 minute wait timer it's quite bad but then we have lap 13 node 5 and you'll see that we have a 2 hour 46 wait timer alongside a 14 hour 40 minute wait timer and that's because the final battle in this ba battle dragon section is going to be a really really long wait timer that is why using these skips at the right time and using your gems at the right time can be so game changing because you could skip eight hours of this with three gems or just with a you know your boy skippy here so those are the things that you want to be taking into account early on it might not seem like it matters that much like Lap six, eh, it's fine. The timers aren't that long. But when you get into the laps later on, it really, really does matter. Like, let's look at lap 17. We have no wait timers. Node two in this one has a wait timer because node twos do start to pick up wait timers around about lap, uh, lap 15-ish. And then we've got two hours 30. We've got eight hours and 20 minutes on the hatching eggs, which is brutal. And then we've got 17 hours to wait for battle dragons and 11 hours to wait for collect food. It is genuinely, you will have to collect 18 lots of collecting food and then you'll have to wait and basically do the exact same thing again, 11 hours, 40 minutes later. So skipping these can be absolutely game changing. You can, you can skip half a day, basically, if you get lucky on these skips. So. Make sure you use them properly. Make sure you're doing the quest properly. Try not to accidentally put in long timers into your farms like I did earlier. It does screw you over quite badly. <laughs> it really does. Make sure you've got as many of your farms open as you possibly can. Make sure your game is open. And ultimately, I hope that you get a nice leaderboard. If you don't, at least try and make it to lap 15 so that you can guarantee that you get this heroic. And then hopefully, by the end of the event, you'll also get your hands on Awakened, the Epic Dark Twins, and the Clay Dragon so that you can take part in the Heroic Combat Quest. But anyway, I think that is more or less everything that I needed to share with you. So again, ditlap.com slash heroic race, or we've got deatlist.com Dragon City Events Race. And I kind of really like the Deatlist website one, uh, especially I think it's when I'm on mobile, I prefer using Deatlist one. Um, especially since Ditlep does have ads, which is why I use Adblock on this website. But Deatlist is quite a good one for the heroic race, especially you'll see all the, it's the same information, just in a slightly different, easy format. And I really like it personally. So I'll be keeping this open pretty much for the entirety of the heroic race and referring back to it on each lap. But I do highly recommend that you do the same just so that, you know, you know what you're doing and that, that way you don't have to remember what's coming up. You can just open up a web page and oh, oh, look, it's right there. I know how, how long I can go and take a break for. Like, look, I can go and have a have a long 16 hour sleep. Well, it wouldn't be that for the battles. It would be like eight hours, but you get what I mean. But anyway, that should be everything. So I'm going to keep collecting from these annoying, annoying farms. I do wish you the best. And I hope that you get your hands on this cutie, cutie Mexican lady.